Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel Tech Lead and partner at Westfall. And recently I did a video about somebody saying that PHP isn't really a sync. And while I did a video on that, I felt that I just didn't quite explain it to you guys really, really well. And that was really giving me a lot of sleepless nights. I couldn't concentrate. I just kept thinking that, gee, man, these guys are still going to be all on this multi-trading, on this cold currency, on this async stuff. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go through that video with you guys and add my two cents in commentary as a professional tech lead and someone who actually does this for a living. Okay, we're going to do that now. But before we pop over there, I got to admit something. I trolled you guys, okay? Rasmus did not break the internet because he can't break the internet. It's powered by PHP. Let's get on to it. Two reasons why people want multi-threading. One of them is that they want to make full use of all the cores on the machine, which is not an issue with PHP because the way PHP is run, it's run from a web server, like PHP FPM processes are sitting there and each process manages a request. You're always going to have more than one concurrent request. So all your cores will be taken up by these web requests running concurrently. So there's no issue of not making use of all the cores on the machine like a desktop app might have. A really good point down here that I failed to mention previously. And that is while PHP is single threaded. So when, when I say single threaded, just think about it as a guy employee who can only do one thing at a time. While it's single threaded, the web, it always runs on a web server on top of it, which is either Apache or Nginx, the most common. And these web servers are multi thread They are concurrent. So you don't have to worry. Well, this is single. If you look at the structure over here, you can see that the web server is handling the multi-threading and that's allowing you to utilize all the cores on your server. And that really makes sense because web servers are developed for handling multiple requests, unlike your desktop. So a desktop, probably you want, if you're doing one thing, you'll be processing that entire thing and you want to throw all your cores at it. Whereas the web server is actually very efficient at pushing all these requests. That, that is the specialty of a web server, right? So if you have a multi-core uh, computer or um, server, you don't have to worry about this. Let the web server handle this. Stop worrying about multi-threading happening on the PHP side. Very important about this. People keep thinking all the time with all the languages, especially like Node.js, about this concurrency and as though PHP is actually not running multi-threading. It's actually running it, but on the web server level. And also, PHP runs on the, your front-end web server for the most part. And when you get a request in, it, if it needs to do some work in the background, that really needs to happen on a different set of servers. So you should use some kind of message queue job worker setup and you should asynchronously kick off these jobs. Just, just like you don't run your database on your front-end web servers, or at least you shouldn't. I know some people do, but you should. Okay, I covered this previously, right, towards the end of my video where I was talking about where PHP would actually be the role controlling language and then some other processor, some other language would actually handle that process. What will happen is that PHP is just basically going to go and do an await wait for that process to uh, complete, check if it's there, and then go and do it. It wouldn't be the one actually doing this. Now, why do you want this done? First of all, right, remember PHP is generally the web server. Usually when, when he says front end, he actually means the um, language that handles the interaction, like sort of like a controller in the MVC model, right? So you don't want to tie up your process engine with PHP being tied up doing some sort of process. You want to give it to a third party, an API or some software that's actually meant to do this. Now in the web business, very few things actually tie up. You know, you're generally waiting for maybe some sort of process, but if you're going to do something really, really intensive, it should be moved to a different server. And the, the hardware itself is usually different for a database. You need a lot more memory on a database server than you need on your front end web server instances. So you can tune your hardware for the specific jobs that it's taking. Your front end web servers tend to not need much memory and they tend to need lots of CPU and strong networking. Um, and you want to keep the latency down. You don't want to tie up your front end web servers. I did Yahoo for many years. And one of the applications I worked a bit on was Yahoo Mail. And Mail 
looks like one big web application, but actually it's very modular. And the piece to look up your contacts in your address book, for example, is completely separate from sending an email, which is completely separate from reading an email. And people read way more emails than they send. So we had a whole cluster of servers that read emails, right, from a back-end email database. And we had a smaller cluster of servers for sending emails. And we had an even smaller cluster for looking up your contacts because you don't look up your address book that often, right? Fantastic example down here, Yahoo Mail, okay? Still, even at this stage, bigger than a lot of applications that all of you guys are making out there. And you can see the split of the cluster of servers in terms of the workload. So where, what is the most intensive usage? Probably reading your email. So you probably want a bunch of clusters uh, in your database handling just reading. Now sending mail is probably even less and contacts is probably the least. I mean, how often do you look up your contacts? So you can start segregating all the different workloads. You can maybe move your databases into different clusters. So I have my contacts database. I have a read only uh, server uh, database that for only read only really, really fast access. And then the sending server that actually just sends the emails to each other. So you can see this is how you can actually scale based on the cluster, right? And it has nothing to do. You see the bottleneck, nothing to do with PHP itself. Okay. So that's the big difference down here. We're talking about scaling and multi-threading and all that kind of stuff. You want to be solving the right problem using the right software in the right place. The way PHP was designed from the very beginning, from day one, was to be stateless. To have a very clean sandbox, not keep any state, so that every request was discrete, so you could scale it horizontally as much as you want. You never really talk about PHP not scaling, the same way you talk about Java and ASP.NET and things, because PHP has never had a scaling problem because of its architecture. Whoa! Checkmate there. I never had a scaling problem. Now, in talking about this, right, I want to talk about the statelessness of PHP, right? And if any one of you guys have actually interacted with PHP, you will know that it's stateless. What is stateless? Um, take a look about uh, Drew Barrymore's character in 50 First Dates, right? Every single date, she has forgotten whatever happened last time and it's a fresh state. The same thing with PHP, you know, you press the reload button and all the variables are gone. Everything sets back to zero. Everything's, you know, has no memory of whatever happened previously. Now, on one side, you know this, I want to put a couple of caveats down there that you want to be um, noticing about. One is watch out for the sessions that need to have some sort of state management there and something to do with images or files. That one, uh, again, we can scale. Uh, by putting that into a backend server, uh, I've been using DigitalOcean Spaces. Again, another example of an API that interacts with our uh, PHP app. Pretty good stuff from Rasmus. I hope you guys took it that into account. That's the bottom line because the tech lead sits. So